Welcome, welcome, my good friends. This is episode number 16, titled How I Arrived into the Real Estate Business. On this particular episode, I would love to have your input. I would love for you to be able to leave your comments at the end of this episode. I will have two questions that I will uh, uh, give you. And you may not have the answer, you may not know, but I really wanna get feedback on your thinking. What do you think? So be prepared as we go through uh, uh, this episode uh, for the questions. Also, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Most importantly, I would like for you to uh, subscribe. So all of these episodes will come directly to you. Now let's get on with this episode number 16. You remember uh, we had changed from Joe's Barbershop to uh, the Umoja Natural House. You will also remember that uh, Umoja is a Swahili word meaning unity. And even at that time, even in the 60s, we were striving to bring unity uh, to our community. And I tell you, it's, it's a task, it's a mission, but it's a mission that we should uh, be committed to until we die, It's bringing unity to us, working together in a spirit of, uh, of, of love and in harmony. So this is what we were trying to do with the word. And, and we, would, uh, we would have a ball there at the shop each and every day. And when we wasn't um, cutting hair or working on each other, giving uh, haircuts or facials, we would play dominoes. Oh, yes. And Charles Stewart and J.D. Oliver, they were the best uh, barbers of, of, of domino playing there at the Umoja Natural House. And from the outside, we had Henry Stinson. Uh, he was a great domino player. And also his uh, brother Julius, they would come through and play dominoes. And when we wasn't uh, uh, playing dominoes, we would go uh, up the street to the billets and uh, to the pool hall. And there we had some great pool shooters like Winners Calvin. And, and, and Hobo, we called him, uh, we called him Hobo, but his real name was Harry Andrews. And then we had uh, Bunny, Bunny Albert, a good, great pool shooter. Uh, we had Choo Choo Bradley, we graduated with the class of 61. And we had Tony Bowles, that he was a great uh, uh, pool shooter. And then we had my Uncle Howard. He wasn't my uncle then, but later on, he became my uncle, Howard Russell. He had, Howard was great. He, could, he had style, but most importantly, he could shoot boo. He was a great athlete. And then uh, we had our barber. Uh, we call him our musician barber, uh, Carl Dickens. He would cut hair, but he, later on, he started working part-time with the famous Whispers. I tell you, they wasn't famous at that time. They would be performing in Oakland. They would perform in, mostly in San Francisco. And on occasion, what we would do, we would uh, uh, travel across the bridge and watch them perform. And some of you will remember that Carl Dickens, he married his childhood sweetheart and our classmate, which was Pat Dunn. She was out of uh, a Parchester a, a village. But like I mentioned that when we wasn't partying uh, uh, in the shop, after we would uh, uh, finish there, we had other choices where we could go to in, in the city of Richmond. For one, we could start for the north part to Parchester Village. And Mr. Smith, uh, he owned the rendezvous, the rendezvous Club right there in uh, Parchester Village. And you could leave Parchester Village and you could travel in, into North uh, Richmond. You would travel on 
a third street, which is now the Fred Jackson Way, and you would arrive to Chesley Avenue. And right there on the west side of Chesley Avenue would be the Mini Lou's uh, Club. This was a classic club, elegancy. She was first class. The food was great, the service was good. And if you remember, Minnie Lou did not take any mess. She had a first class and sometime Jimmy McCracklin, you may remember the blues singer, he would perform there. Kimberly, he was a rich but a really, uh, played uh, the organ professionally, and he would perform there. And you could step around uh, on Chesley, right to the right side, two doors away, would be the Savoy Club. You remember the Savoy Club. I mean, it wasn't quite like a mini lose, but nevertheless, you could have a great time at the, uh, the Savoy Club. And I tell you, uh, that was a whole lot of shaking going on on Chesley Avenue. You may remember the Hampton family, they owned the first class cobbler uh, shop, a place where you could take your shoes to be mended and you could leave with a very top notch uh, shoe shine. And down in right in the next block was the famous Harrison's barbecue. And he had, a, Mr. Harrison, he would make a, a homemade link. And it would be a huge link because he did not use a whole case. And he used a, a beef case in which was a, a larger case. And, then, and at that restaurant, you could take one link and it would be a sandwich and two links would be a dinner along with uh, potato salad and baked beans. That Chesley Avenue was uh, 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 famous and a great avenue. Now you could come back to Third Street, which is now the Fred Jackson Way. And right on your right, uh, Kirby Bryce. Kirby Bryce's family owned uh, uh, a gas station uh, right there. And then on the left side was uh, uh, Sandy Davis and his family. They owned a, a gas station on the left and right next door to those was the, uh, the jazz uh, uh, land record shop owned by Mr. Ollie Freeman. And I must tell you that here, I had a aunt, my aunt Ava, she worked there and at that time she wasn't my aunt. But later on, she would become my aunt. So you see, we're moving. Now down Third Street, Fred Jackson Way, you could go to uh, the end to, I think it's Stanton, go down the Battery, and it was a club called the Downbeat. This club was owned by John, Mr. and Mrs., John and Francis Carson. You could leave there. Now we, we're headed downtown. And on 6th Street, we had the Thomas Club. I hope some of you remember the Thomas Club. Yes, and then you may remember the exotic dancer, Georgieva. She owned the club there on 10th Street. Now we're downtown. Now we're moving out of North Richmond and right as you would make that little bend coming out of North Richmond, uh, 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 Mr. Pippins owned a, a, a auto repair shop right there. Now we're heading downtown. And uh, on 6th Street, we talked about the 6th Street. Now we're heading to Cutting, South Richmond. And it's on first and Cutting was the Slick Chick. You remember the Slick Chick? Then on 2nd Street, coming up Cutting Boulevard, was the Candlelight Club. This club was owned by uh, James and Ernest Cash. They also owned the liquor store there on the corner of 29th and, and, and Cutting. And then on 11th Street was the Gray's Club, the Gray's Club. Then on 19th Street was the Elkhorn Club. On the corner of 20, South 29th Street was the Swahili Club. This club was uh, owned by Mr. Smith, who also had owned the Rendezvous Club in Parchester Village. And then we arrived to Little Ricky's, right there on the right on like 31st and, and, and Cutting Boulevard. And then across the street, across 
uh, Carson Boulevard, right to the left, was the classy McCasmo Club. This is a club with Jay Payton and, and the, uh, the Natural Four and, and uh, the Whispers and all would be right here in the city of Richmond. It was amazing. I had a conversation with my good friend, uh, Norman Yakes, and we came to the conclusion that uh, Lil Ricky's, Lil Ricky's was the last club to close. And we came to the conclusion that uh, it was around over 20 years ago. So here's my first question, my good friends. And, 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 and try to just think, even if you don't know the answer. Even though all these clubs was not open at the same time, did, do you think that all the owners got together and made the decision to shut down? So my question to you is, in your opinion, and in your opinion, what do you think? What happened? What happened through all those years of having ownership, showing the ability to be able to operate a successful business? In your opinion, Please leave your comment. What do you think happened? That's the first question. What do you think happened? And we have other businesses. We had own cleaners, Dana cleaners, Potter's cleaners. We own gas stations. Matter of fact, the Providence Missionary Baptist Church, they own the, the gas station right there on uh, the, it would be on the north corner of, uh, of Cutting Boulevard, like at Harbor Way. On that. So that's my first question. In your opinion, what do you think happened? And my second question, as I mentioned, my good friend Norman Yates, we came to, to the conclusion that it was over 20 years ago and Lil Ricky's was the last one. My second question is why, in your opinion, has not another club of that caliber. Now, maybe others, I don't know. And if you uh, are, are here about this and, and there's a club, it's just, uh, uh, I apologize. It's just that I don't know about it. So I, but I stand to be corrected if there's one. But, but the second question is, in your opinion, in your opinion, what happened? What happened? That's the second, first one. But why? Not again in 20 years have we as African Americans been able to own another business like that. Why, in your opinion? I'd really appreciate feedback on that. But now I'm going to move on. I also mentioned in episode number 15 that um, our congressman, Jerome Waldy, had, uh, had sent out a letter. Uh, regard to small businesses regarding uh, applying for uh, a SBA loan. And my good friend, Lester Washington and I, and if you've been watching these episodes and I had mentioned that uh, Lester and I uh, had known each other basically all our lives. And he's in episode number two, uh, when we lived in the projects and he was one of the only um, members that actually at that time owned a home. That was a big thing. And his father uh, was the Richmond's first African-American policeman. So you may remember that. Oh, you may also remember that he and I would be traveling to Los Angeles and different places shopping. And our plan had some to someday to open up a clothing store. So we are, we are applied and, and put in an application. Uh, and we gave a, a strategic plan because we had been really thinking about this, uh, uh, that one day it would come to fruition. And here that day is, so we applied. And after a few months, we received uh, a reply that, uh, that they had uh, received our application and yes, it was something that they would like to uh, move forward with. So we got to go ahead 
and uh, to move forward. And as a matter of fact, that uh, we had applied for a fifty thousand dollar loan. Now that's a lot of money today. Can you imagine what that was in nineteen sixty uh, in the sixties? Because I think we started the process in like nineteen sixty seven in that particular area. But here we are. We had so we we got to step it up now. So uh, uh, Lester. He had uh, became the assistant manager at Smith's Clothing. Is at that time Smith's Clothing had been in existence for um, almost a hundred years, and they had uh, like thirty six or thirty seven stores. He was the assistant manager of the Smith's Clothing on uh, Shattuck Avenue in Berkeley. I had to transition and took another part time job up the street on the corner at Rogers Men's Store. Oh, Rogers Men's Store, I needed to get some more background. I had a part, Lester had the clothing part, but I need to know, and I had the business part. So we're gonna combine those two and move forward. So uh, when I arrived there, what a joy. I always talk about uh, God put people in your way to help you to do particular things. And so when was Calvin, he had been working there, and I think I left, he was, I did mention he was one of the best pool shooters, but he's, he also worked full time there at Rogers. And so I had a relationship with him prior to going there. I asked him to help me to get a job there because I would see him at the a pool hall. And I got on at Rogers Men's Store and also Elijah um, um, Manning. Yeah, he was there. I think he was a he was working part time there. He was like in the funeral business and doing drapery at that time. But those two older men, uh, they not only inspired me, but they helped me to do so. At the we had a uh, after a, a few months, we received a reply that our application had been accepted. So I want to tell you this. So in 1969, uh, uh, we opened up Les and Joe's Men's Store, located at 820 McDonald. And our strategic plan was basically that uh, we knew we couldn't really compete against like pennies and maces and cowbells. We didn't even try. But we had a plan uh, or for the boutique that uh, of quality and style. The place was a stylish, I mean, up to date, real stylish place. It was a boutique that you could uh, purchase something from Les and Joe's and you wouldn't see it all over town. When we wanted a gentleman's look. That's what the look that we were portraying out, not looking like howdy doody, all mixed up in, in everything. That was our, our, our style. So, but guess what? We opened up and, and we we're driving, but and that was a great thing for 1969. But you know what? It wasn't the best thing that happened. Let me tell you the best thing that happened. And she would say through all of these episodes, the best is yet to come. Well, I tell you, the best that really happened in, in 1969 that my daughter, Margot Lynetta, was born. She was born September the 11th, 1969. So uh, Margot, thank you for continuing to watch these episodes. And I hope that after this one, where, where I call you out, that you don't discontinue following uh, your father on, on these episodes. So ladies and gentlemen, Back to, as I close, this episode number 16. In all seriousness, I really want to work with this because it's going to help on the arrival. And you, you could see something going on here. Give it some thought. What happened? What happened, in your opinion? And why haven't we had it again? Please give your feedback. And, and if you are having problems with the technology, you could also call me. 
Uh, the phone number is on the um, on to my left, and it's uh, 510-253-8712. So please, please give your comments. If you were in that day, I know it's not a whole lot of us, but there are some. Think about it and leave your comments. Greatly appreciate it. Looking forward to being with you on episode number 17. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.